Pause. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? He is back. Just like the famous words of General Patton, I will return. He has returned to the airways, ladies and gentlemen, in the house today with us right here in the world of arts people enjoy. It's the one and only t Boz with words of wisdom and moments of meditation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Why am I whispering? Well, Jock and I have a surprise. I know the lights are, I know the, good to hear you laugh, boss. I know the lights are off in the studio. Everybody come in, stand, don't touch the switch. Everybody sit, you can find your seats. I know it's dark in here. Okay, is everybody in? Oh, my brother's always late. Boz, sit down. Lynn's here. Okay. Everyone, Miles is here. Chris is here. Okay, everyone's in. All right. Now, I want everybody to close their eyes. Okay? And on the count of three, I want you to open them. Ready? One, two, three. Wow. Look at the WAPJ studio. It looks beautiful in here. I know all of you can't believe it. The beautiful tree that the volunteer staff put up, it is gorgeous. A Norwegian spruce came from the same farm as the one in Rockefeller Center. I want you guys to know that. Isn't it beautiful? Good morning, Jock. I couldn't wait for everyone to see how beautifully we decorated the studio. We even have a menorah in the corner for our Jewish brethren who listen to the show. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Leave your troubles at the door. Thank you, John Ramsey, for all the lights and the bells and the garland and the bows. It is absolutely beautiful. Don't you agree, everyone? I know you agree. It is beautiful. It is Christmas time in Torrington. The downtown looks beautiful. And uh, though there are troubles in the world, my friends, there is the hope every year as we celebrate Christmas that God comes to us in the form of a child and brings us new life and new spirit. So glad to have you back in the big chair, Jock. I know you've had some challenges, and I just want to tell the listening audience, he really had to do his thing to be in the studio today so we could present the show. And um, there's a lot of people I've met in my life, but Jock is one of the one of those people that walks the walk and talks the talk and committed to the endeavors that he picks. So I just want to thank you from me to, and the audience for coming in today amongst all your challenges and uh, doing the show. But everyone, grab your coffee. Yes, we have red cups and green cups, and we have red pads and green pads and red pads and uh, silver and blue for our Jewish brethren. It is absolutely beautiful. Thank you again for decorating the studio. So we're going to get to our topic in uh, Lickety Split. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to get to our shout-outs, and I want to make a correction. A couple of weeks ago, we did the Thanksgiving Spectacular, and it was brought to my attention that when I did my thankful part, I did not mention my two daughters, Emily and Rachel, my grandson, Jackson, Emily's boyfriend, Storm, and my wonderful son-in-law, Justin. And I apologize for that. What I want to share with all of you is Jock and I do this show live, and we do it extemporaneously. It's done very much like the way Jackie Gleason did The Honeymooners. I do not have a script. I do not have a, 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 I have a format, but I have the, I, the idea. I have some uh, quotes and scripture things written so I don't make a mistake. But the whole show is done off the cuff, extemporaneous. So as you hear me talking about the topic, as you hear those thoughts, those thoughts are coming into my head. So the downside of that is when you're doing a live show and when you're trying to get everybody's quotes in for Thanksgiving and trying to stay on time for Jock and the radio station and the other volunteers to do their time, you do make mistakes. I'm human. So my apologies to my family. I didn't do that intentionally. I just made a big boo-boo there, and I'm glad that, uh, you know, some people called and brought that up. The other thing, very quickly, is you hear John Ramsey on this station say, if there's things about the show, not only my show, all the shows you like and don't like, please call in so that we can fine-tune this great radio station 
to be your favorite radio station here in Torrington. Let's get to a couple of other uh, shout outs. Okay, Howard's Bookstore. I talked about uh, um, Hit and Split, the book by Simon Green. Uh, great book. Try to find that online and get it. Uh, Veronica and I hit Kelly's Crystals downtown. We go every year. We get a new couple of new Christmas ornaments for our tree. Her store is beautiful. You walk in there, boys and girls, very much like the 1940s uh, in Torrington. I don't say Torrington's heyday. This is Torrington's heyday. That was one time in Torrington's life. This is another time in Torrington's life. But get get down there and uh, see Kelly's Crystals. She has beautiful, beautiful ornaments. She has gifts. She has jewelry, and she is the nicest girl. Um, does a great job down there. Five Points Gallery. Veronica and I visited that again a couple weeks ago. Boys and girls, go there, too. It is beautiful what they did there. And what's nice is there's some big window space, so you get a whole different perception of downtown. You're looking at it from different angles. It's almost like part of the artwork. And there's different artists there. When Veronica and I went, it was uh, not a bowl of fruit or that kind of art, but different lines and colors. And at first, you know, you think people think, oh, I could do that. But when you really look at it, when you open your mind, you have a different perspective, you realize the skill and the talent and the beauty uh, in art. And they have beautiful music there. The lighting is fabulous for those of us like me, visually impaired. And so Five Points Gallery, right over there on the corner of Water Street, please get there and enjoy that. They have a beautiful, beautiful place there. Crumbs, we went there. Great hot chocolate in Franklin Square, down the end on the left. While you're out doing some shopping or if you're coming back from the east side doing some shopping, go. Don't worry about your blood sugar. Have a little treat at Crumbs. The owner is very, very nice. The store is done inside. You feel like you're in New York City. Very chic, very nice, and a great place. So there is things to do in the new Torrington heyday. So today's topic, we're going to talk about God's call. And it's going to have a Christmas theme. We're going to talk about the Annunciation. So what we're going to do today, here's our format. We're going to analyze Luke chapter 1, verse 37. We call that the Annunciation. And then uh, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, about the centurion and his uh, servant, and how he asked Jesus to heal his servant, and he's open to God's call. So we're going to compare the two of them and then tie a bow and show you how both the Annunciation and the Roman centurion and a bunch of other people can help us to hear God's call. So let's start with Peter. Okay, First Peter, and uh, we look at First Peter chapter ten, uh, chapter four, verse ten and eleven. All right, and it says uh, in uh, in First Peter, it says God, the Creator of the universe, has called us to be part of His work. Wow. I mean, sometimes these things go right by you. God the Creator has called us, and we're going to talk about the Blessed Mother and how she plays a big role in salvation history, but God the Creator has called us, not just the rich, not just the famous, not just the talented, us, U.S., all of us, to be part of his work, his miracles. God doesn't perform his miracles by himself. He performs those miracles through people, us. And isn't that amazing that the creator of the universe wants you, Josh, me, Buzz, you, Stephen, you, Lynn, you, Jim, to be part of his work. Is that not phenomenal? And we're going to talk next week, the, uh, the second Christmas message. It'll be our last show for uh, the Christmas break. We're going to talk about the incarnation. But here God is asking us to be part of his work. That's what it says in Peter. We look further into Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. It says each of us should use whatever gifts we have to serve others. We talked about that. So you have gifts. So God wants to work through you. So what is your call? Remember the show Mission Impossible? Here's your mission if you choose to accept. God is constantly calling you. He's constantly whispering in your ear through the Holy Spirit to come and do wondrous things. But we have to be open to that. We want to use our gifts. Sometimes, and we're going to talk about the Roman centurion, 
we block God's call because we have a preconceived notion of what we think it is. You are important. Let me just check on the time. How are we doing? Okay. You are important. Why are you important? Because Jesus took on our humanity, our humanity, to be like us, so he could show us how to be like him. Boom. So it's almost like, remember when you were a kid, you had that reversible jacket, it was green on one side and blue on the other? Jesus came into a stable. He was born amongst animals and dirt. That dirt is our sin. And he came as a humble, helpless child, so we can embrace him. And you are so important that the God of the universe, it just said in Peter, a God that knew no confinement of time, a God that knew no pain, a God that knew nothing about time, puts himself in the person of Jesus and comes to us, and then he calls us. I call you one by one. That's how important you are. He, I don't know if some of you are getting this, he took on our humanity to be like us. So then he could show us how to be like him. How are we doing with time? Good. All right. So we're going to talk about one of the greatest calls, if not the greatest call, pretty soon about the Blessed Mother. Some of you are saying, well, I don't know if I could do the call. Okay. I don't know if I got the talent, Tommy. You know, I don't know. Look at our buddy Moses, right? God picks him to, to lead the Jew. He calls him to lead the Jewish people out of Egypt because, you know, finally the Pharaoh had passed over. The Pharaoh's son died, so he calls Moses into the room and says, all right, Moses, get your group out of here. (laughs) I'm done with you. And so God calls Moses to do this. And Moses is like, what? Me? I'm not eloquent. I don't know how to speak. I'm not like these other dudes. I'm not like my brother Aaron. That dude knows how to talk. I'm just a big guy with a beard and, and all of that, and I've done a lot of bad things in my life. And God says to him, hey, Moses, come over here. I got to talk to you. Moses, he says, I, the God of the universe who created eyes, who created speech, who created mankind, what are you worried about? I'll give you the words and the talent and the speech to lead my people out of Egypt. So some of us are thinking it's all about us. But it says in Peter, he wants to use us, but we think we can't do it because of some of the things that we're not good at. And so we block God's call because we get like Moses. But then God shakes us a little bit and says, hey, dude, I created all of this. Don't you think I could give you the ability to speak and say the right words? And of course, Moses submits. Boom. They're out of Egypt. Why don't we go, uh, we got three minutes. Okay, let's keep going. Because I want to get into Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And we're going to talk about a young girl. A lot of you, when you hear this, and I talked about this last year, it says when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary in what we call the Annunciation, it doesn't matter if you're uh, Catholic, Lutheran, Baptist, Protestant, it's called the Annunciation, all right? So it's, I'm not trying to play sides here. In chapter 1, verse 37, the angel appears to Mary and says, Behold, I have good tidings, I have good news for you. And he tells her that she's going to conceive a son and all of that. And what does she say to him? She says, I am the hand... Now, there's different interpretations of this. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. Boom. Oh. Now, some of you, you know, you look at movies or you look at your little nativity sets. First of all, Mary didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. And Mary, what people don't understand is that she was a young Jewish girl, probably no more than 16 or 17 years old. And so now she's, she knows that the Jewish people have been um, under, under rule for so many years with the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and now the Romans. And she knows that the, the a quote from Isaiah, that a, sh- a shoot will sprout from the stump of Jesse. We're going to get into that right after the break a little bit. She knows all it is. And here's this angel. And she's a young teenage girl, probably nervous, not like what you see in the movies, 
probably nervous as heck saying, me? <laughs> me? I'm the daughter of St. Anne and, and St. Jo- Joachim, Joachim, I said, and, and I'm going to get married to this guy, Joseph, and I'm just, a, you know, women in those days were just above cattle. We talked about this last year. And she was probably nervous as heck, thinking, what? Me? The Messiah? Emmanuel? I'm just a kid. Uh, let's, yeah, let's go to the break, Jock, because I want to make a point after this and keep rolling. Will do. I want to take this opportunity to recognize and thank our very generous and supportive sponsors for everything that they do for us here at WAPJ. I want to give a big, huge shout out to the Nutmeg Conservatory for the Arts, Torrington Savings Bank, TDI, Torrington Distributors Incorporated, and Charlotte Hungerford Hospital. Thank you so much for allowing us to bring you the quality community radio programming that you are listening to at this particular time. And with that being said, we'll return the broadcast back over to T-Boz for more words of wisdom and moments of meditation. Thank you, Jock. So her mission impossible, if you choose to accept, was to become the mother of the Savior. What does she say? Yes. They call that the great fiat. She doesn't bumble around like Moses did. And the Jewish people at the time were looking for a, 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 a majestic leader, someone of royalty, someone like King David, someone this. And Mary, being a good Jew, knew her catechism, if you want to call it that, and was probably scratching her head saying, why me? I'm just the peasant girl. But rather than block the call, rather than go into, to, you know, overdrive and get nervous and say, I don't, I can't, you know, and why don't you pick the girl down the street? You know, she's taller and prettier than me. Her great fiat, they call it. She says, yes, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me if you have said. Some of us are being called for great things, but we keep blocking the call. We keep putting ourselves, our, our, our fears, our worries, our lack of doing things in front of us, and so that it never gets through us. So my question to you guys today is, if an angel told you that you were going to do something unbelievable, would you say yes? Would you say okay? Would you say I'm the handmaid or the, or the, 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 the hand man of the Lord? Let it be done as you have said. Let me give you a little good news. You've already had an angel visit you, and you've already been called to do something. Not all of us are going to be the mother of God. Not all of us are going to be Moses. Not all of us are going to be Derek Jeter. And not all of us are going to be President Obama or President Reagan. But we are still important because God took on human form. You've already been called an angel, maybe not in the way of the Annunciation. The reason why you're on this planet, the reason why you're on this earth is because you're going to take part in God's glorious mission. How did he bring the Savior into the world? Through a teenage girl. Just what I said earlier, what is said in First Peter. He uses us. God could have just come down to earth at 33 years old in the Jordan River, bing, bang, boom, and he's there. Could have done that, couldn't he? But no, he used an innocent virgin girl who was supposed to be married. Then they thought they were going to get divorced. Then they get out of town. He uses, not uses, but coexists, right? Procreates with us human beings to create his miracles. Get your head around that. He brought the savior of the world through a girl who was no more than maybe 16 or 17 years old. Think about that for a minute. Now, let's look at, we're going to do Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. And Jesus says, In no one in Israel have I seen such faith. He wasn't talking about the rabbis. He wasn't talking about the Pharisees. And he wasn't talking about the Sadducees and all the learned people who knew about religion and faith. You know who he was talking about? a Roman centurion, a guy that was persecuting Christians, a guy that had the Jewish people under his thumb. 
but his main servant, his best servant, was deathly sick. And he didn't have any preconceived notions like the people we talk about. He heard God's call, and he went, and he wasn't even close to Jesus, but he knew that from afar Jesus could heal his servant. And he said, I've seen and I believe, and he prayed, can you come and heal my servant? That's who Jesus is talking about in Matthew 8, chapter 10. He's talking about someone who was on the way other side of the aisle, extreme left, extreme right, whatever you want to call it, and this guy heard God's call to be a follower. And so he asked for help because he has faith. He doesn't have a preconceived notion. What the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the rabbis were saying at the time is, oh, he, he has dinner with prostitutes and, and tax collectors. Oh, he heals on the Sabbath. They had that in front of them. They couldn't hear God's call. But the Roman centurion, like Mary, not having a preconceived notion, was open to the fact to say, come and heal my servant. Come and heal my servant, please. There is a, um, a Japanese, um, the, the founder of Tao, Taoism, and his name is Lao Tzu, and he's a Chinese philosopher, and he says, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Boom. Alcoholic Anonymous has the same thing, let go, let God. So a lot of us like I said earlier, have had an angel come to us. A lot of us, God wants to use us, work with us, procreate with us in his kingdom here on earth and in heaven. He wants us. He wants to do the things through us, with us, in us. But sometimes we're like the people back in Jesus's time. We're saying, well, he sits and has dinner with tax collectors. And so they couldn't see the forest for the trees. You know, a lot of us today, we talk about you know, liberal conservatism and all this other stuff. I'm not going to get into all of that. But think about this, talk about being open, hearing God's call. Jesus, not that he was a liberal, but he had a very liberal message. Here's the Jewish people, and Mary knew this, is under Roman occupancy, okay? And if you go back to Isaiah, a, 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 a sprout will come from the stump of Jesse. So a stump of a tree looks dead, right? And... Some of us in our world today, all we see is stumps. Okay, so that's a good visual. But what Isaiah says is from the stump of Jesse, not the tree of Jesse, from the stump of Jesse will come a sprout. And, and what he was talking about was Jesus. So from nothing, or what looks like nothing, comes something. So now here is the something, Jesus, telling the people, love your enemy. If they hit you in the face, turn the other cheek. Pray for your enemies. Love one another. Could you imagine going over to the Ukraine right now and saying to a Ukrainian guy, go hug a Russian, go love a Russian, go pray for a Russian, go put your arms around a Russian? They, they would think we were nuts. So the Jewish people at the time, they're waiting for this Messiah on a horse and a sword and an army. Instead, they get the carpenter's son getting a bath in the Jordan River by his very wild cousin who's eating locusts and wearing camel hair. And a lot of us today, if we were in that time, we would have said, no way, this guy isn't the Messiah, because we would have been blocked. We wouldn't have heard the call to follow him. We wouldn't have heard the call to take up our cross and follow him and to be part of his miracle. So, the, so that's what I said about going back to Mary. She knew that the, the sprout would come from the stump of Jesse, right? And so... Now they say she's going to be the mother of the Messiah. So she put aside all of the things that she thought was going to happen. But some of us today, like I said, if we were alive then, we would have not heard Jesus call. It was too liberal. It's like as if we were a Ukrainian. If Jesus was alive during the Vietnam War, he'd be putting the flowers in the cannons. In order to hear God's call, our mind has to be open. Our prayer life has to be full. This is a wonderful time of year. And God, we call it Advent in the Catholic Church. I know I've been visiting the um, Baptist Church and the uh, Congregational Church here in town. They also call it Advent. So we're all, you know, on the same page with that. But we're, we're coming into a beautiful time of year, and it all starts with this beautiful image of Mary, a young girl, saying, Yes. 
Someone said to me once, what if she said no? I said, I don't want to think about that. I don't know. And then we see the centurion again, just saying, okay, God, here I am. Heal my servant. You know, Tony Robbins says, if, if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you always got. He's talking about business success. I'm talking about faith. If you do what you've always done, you get what you always got. If you always think because someone was just diagnosed with cancer that God isn't calling you to do something. If you think because you're not tall enough, God isn't calling you to do something, right? Getting back to the stump. If you hear about the war in the Ukraine, oh, all you see is the stump. If you someone got laid off from a job, oh, I, don't, I can't do anything. God's not here in my life. He's not calling me. Then just what Tony Robbins says, if you keep doing that, instead of doing what Mary did and what the centurion did is be open and say yes and let God do wondrous miracles through you, it would be a whole different world for you and me. In the movie Thelma and Louise, they say, you get what you settle for. What are you settling for, my friends? Are you settling for a miraculous life? Are you settling for a life of openness to hearing what God wants you to do? It could be the smallest thing. It could be, I know a friend of mine, I don't want to use his name. He helped a guy years ago because the guy was behind in his rent a couple of about $300. You know what the amazing thing is? My friend saw this guy many years later and the guy paid him back. So that's a little, that's a miracle. It doesn't always have to be the Annunciation. It doesn't always have to be the Roman centurion. It doesn't always have to be the parting of the Red Sea. You all are important, as it says. God took on a humanity. You, you all are important. Each of us has gifts. You all are important because, as it says, God, the creator of the universe, wants to use all of us in his glorious works. We look at, how we doing on time, boss? Okay. A couple of minutes, we're right on time. We look at Mika, chapter 6, verse 8. And he, here's what we have to do, boys and girls. It's not that hard to hear God's call. He has shown us what is good and what is required. Act justly, love mercifully, walk humbly with your God. Not behind your God, not in front of your God, with your God. Think about that. God wants to work with you, Dina, with you, Jim, with you, Peggy, with you, Lynn. The creator of the universe is calling you to do something. This Christmas, answer the call. This Christmas, open your heart. Don't worry about what you can't do. Don't worry about what you don't have. This Christmas, say what Mary said 2,000 years ago when the angel appeared to her and said, Behold, I have good news of great joy. And the name Emmanuel, boys and girls, means God with us. Not God up on a cloud. Not God in a distant place with us. He's as much with us today as he was with Mary when she conceived Jesus. The same. There's no different. Scripture is a living word. It's not something that it was written years ago. It's live today. Now, here's our takeaway. Sheryl Sandberg, she, uh, an author, motivational, motivational speaker, she says, if you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, if you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask which seat. Just take it. If you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask which seat. Just take it. What is Cheryl talking about? What I've been talking about for almost a half an hour. You have been offered a seat on a rocket ship. That rocket ship is to be part of God's work here on Earth. You don't ask which seat. <laughs> Just get on that rocket Open your heart and your mind. Be ready for God's call, for what he wants you to do. Even if it's small, still is important. And I've said this once before. If you ever look at a jigsaw puzzle, you can't finish it until you get that little, little tiny piece, right? So God wants to work with you. 
as he did with the Blessed Mother. And though she has a great calling, so do you. Jock, you want to tie a bow on uh, our talk? And then we have a really cool song, boys and girls, that's going to rock you up and turn these lights even brighter. How can I put a bow on such um, an overwhelming gift? Um, the gift of life. Um, that's why they call it the present. Uh, we're living in the present, and we all have uh, we all have a calling. And depending on how high that calling is, uh, kind of reinforces uh, what's going to be required to meet that calling. And nine times out of ten, it requires God's strength. But what better ally could we have? And in the environment that we live in today... It's very challenging. And having the ability to meet those challenges, or should I say to overcome those challenges, sometimes can definitely hinge on your resources and higher power. So um, once again, I am certainly uh, uplifted and edified by your... Uh, your conversation this morning. And I think that this is something that everyone can kind of revel in because people can take away the fact that they have God speaking to them, whether they're listening or not is a whole nother situation, but to know that we have a living, huge, omnipotent God that is interested in, and each and every one of us is uh, uh, truly uh, a miraculous thing. Very well said, Jock. Very well said. So with that, T-Boz, as always, uh, you provide a little light for us that we can take away and apply to our daily pursuits or even our um, lifelong perspectives. And uh, every every little bit helps. So uh, we really applaud you and appreciate your contributions to the station and to the show. And we look forward to many, many more episodes of Words of Wisdom and Moments of Meditation with T-Boss. Thank you, Jack. Everyone, it's Friday Eve. Have a wonderful weekend. Get out and support the businesses downtown. Enjoy cutting your tree down. Make sure it doesn't fall on your head. Jock, we're ready for the song. <laughs> Have a nice weekend, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah.